Today I'll be talking about trees, specifically binary search trees and AVL trees. In computer science, graphs are a data structure made of nodes and edges, not one of those things you make through Excel. A tree is a particular kind of graph in which a node is designated as the root, and all the other nodes are either its children if there's a direct connection, or descendants if it's an indirect connection that goes through other nodes. A node can only have one parent, and if it doesn't have any, then it means that it's the root. The main characteristic of trees is that they have no cycles, which means that there's always no more than one way to reach a node from any other node. If a node doesn't have any children, we call it a leaf. Binary trees are a specific kind of tree in which each node can have at most two children. You could represent a graph as node objects, which have references to other node objects, but there's a really nice way to store it as an array as well. I'll show you how it goes if you have a binary tree. You're basically assigning a number to each node in the tree, going layer by layer, left to right, and using that as the index of where you store that element in the array. From any given node, you can take its index and multiply it by 2 and then add 1 to get its left child, or add 2 to get its right child. This works because it's a binary tree and the number of possible nodes on each successive layer doubles every time. If it was a tree which allowed a bigger number of children per node, then you'd multiply it by the maximum number of children. If you want to go the other way around and find the parent of a node, then you take the ceiling of half of the index, which means basically the, in the half of the index rounded up, and then you subtract 1 to that. A binary search tree is a binary tree that follows this rule. For each node, the left subtree, which means the tree rooted at the left child of that node, all has values that are smaller than the node, and the right subtree all has values that are bigger than the node. This means you can look for specific items in your tree without having to look through all the items that are there. Sound familiar? That's because it works like binary search, which I explained in one of my older videos. It rules out half of the items on every iteration because it goes down one half of the tree and not the other. Let's go through an example. I've got both laid out here as a binary search tree representation or the sorted array you'd have if you were running the binary search. So if you're looking for four, for example, you would start by looking in the middle, which is five, and then four is smaller than five, so you go down the left subtree, or you, you go to the half of the left part of the array. And then the next thing you find there is a three. So you're looking for four, which is greater than three. So you go down the right subtree, or you go to the right of the remaining array. And there you find four. This usually works quite well because you can rule out about half of the remaining elements on each try. The problem is that you can make a legal binary search tree where this won't work. And you could end up having to look through all the items anyway if you make something that looks a bit like this. That's why people have invented self-balancing trees. The one I'll be showing you is called an AVL tree. The premise is that for any node in the tree, one subtree is not allowed to exceed the height of the other subtree by more than one. The way this works is that every time you add something to the tree, it checks if the insertion made something unbalanced, and if yes, it fixes it. So in the end, that means that you do more work when you're inserting in order to ensure that retrieving items will be optimal. Let's have a look at some examples. So here there's other, there's other stuff up there that we don't need to care about. So you see here that node number two has no children on the left, but it has a child on the right, which is number four, which has a child itself. So that's a height of two on the right, but zero on the left. So that's in balance, and it can't stay like that. We're going to fix that by rotating it left. So if you can picture that, we're taking this little subtree and twisting it around. And then we end up with this child of number four, which number three, 
which we don't really know what to do with anymore because now number four would have three children. So we're going to give that to number two. If the situation is symmetric, but on the other side, we can fix it by doing the same thing, but rotating in the other direction to the right instead, like this. But what do you do if it looks like this? You can't fix it with the same method because then it wouldn't have the binary search tree property anymore of the left subtree being smaller than the node and, and the right subtree being bigger than the node. With something like this, you'd have to rotate twice once in one direction on the subtree, and then back on the node that was originally unbalanced. In order to determine which rotation to use, we look at the first two edges on the way to the insertion or the imbalance. If they are in a straight line, so we took the same fork of the path both times, either left left or right right, then a single rotate works. If not, we need a double rotate. I don't want to spend too much time proving these things, there are a lot of proofs out there, but it can be done by induction. Intuitively, it, it makes sense that if you have a balance tree and insert one item, there can be more than one imbalance created. If you fix this imbalance using one of the rotation operations, the parent node might still be unbalanced, so you climb back up the tree fixing imbalances, and the very latest one you can reach and fix will be the root. So if you're lucky, it will be fine before you reach the root, but if, if not, you reach the root and you fix it so there's no more imbalances left. And the smallest tree you can consider, which is going to be one node, is obviously balanced, you can't do anything about it. So if every time you add something, you balance the result, the whole tree will stay balanced every time. By cleaning up after yourself every step of the way, you're never going to end up with a mess on your hands.